Good afternoon, Orange County and beyond. I'm Heather Bell, the Director of Membership for the Orange County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here today to welcome Dan Feliciano, the owner and project manager of Matt and Lacquer Painting LLC for take two of Meet the Member. He is a member of the Orange County Chamber of Commerce since May. Welcome, Dan. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So, Dan, you and I met on the first day of Leadership Orange, and it was like instant gravitation. I, like, I walked in the room, and I just knew I had to sit next to this guy. Something told me he was the person. He was going to be my person. And so we quickly figured out why. Um, so your story is that you are a Marine Corps major flying helicopters and um, a flight school instructor with three combat tours. So thank you so much for your service. And anybody that knows me, that's that's how we gravitated to each other. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for all that you did for our country and putting yourself at risk. Um, but then you get out, right? And so you go and you work for Shell Oil as a regional aviation logistics manager first in the Gulf of Mexico, and then you go to Southeast Asia. How did this journey take you to, I'm going to go to Orange County and open my own painting business? Yeah, so it's a it's a roundabout way of going from flying helicopters, which I you remember I said I have I have um, props, so I'm, I'm going to bring one of my props out, right? So. I love your props. <laughs> That's awesome. This helmet, this helmet always makes my head look a lot fatter than it normally is, I think. Uh, no, it makes your chin look thinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was a long trip from wearing this in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan for three tours to uh, back here in Orange County. But I mean, I'm an Orange County guy. You know, I grew up in Middletown. I was born and raised. Uh, well, I wasn't born there. I was born in Westchester and Yonkers, but I was raised in Middletown. And um you know, my family was here, and after I graduated from Middletown High School, I went off, and then I never came back. And um, so I was working with Shell in Malaysia as the regional head of aviation logistics for Southeast Asia, and um, my daughter had a speech delay, and we couldn't get any help over there. So my wife and my daughter and my son um, who was only one years old at the time, moved back to the United States to this house that we own in Goshen. And uh, I was staying over there in Malaysia and I was working and I was like, you know, it's great and working for Shell is great and I loved it, but you know, it's it's not like being away from your family and supporting your country, you know I mean? Um, right. So I said, you know, I gotta go and uh, and I came home. And, you know, I had the fortunate experience of working with a craftsman as I rebuilt my house, uh, a painter, and we got to talk in and we developed this kind of business plan. And I said, you know, we can do this. Um, you know, we can build a better company, one that's got, you know, some business model around it, something that's got some, um, you know, standards set so that we can produce a quality product over and over again. And um, And then my goal is hopefully to take this model and spread it, you know, throughout the United States for other military guys, you know, cause a lot of times you get out of the military and um, you don't necessarily have a skill that translates to uh, the real world, except for the fact that you know how to lead people and you know how to deliver things on time and on budget and you have pride in your work. Um, so I said, you know, I'm going to take this model once I finish building it out and I'm going to, I'm going to release it. You know, I'm going to try to get other military guys who, you know, want to lead other people and deliver a, a high level product and, um, and we're going to grow it and, um, you know, we'll see what happens. So we're in year three of that model. And a lot of things have changed, lots of ups and downs. A lot of people have come and go, but the dream and the model stays the same. And, um, you know, I'm thinking this year we'll finally be able to bring on our second military guy towards the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year and expand a little bit. All right. 
Well, I, we've kind of jumped into some of my other questions, but we've got it all there. Awesome. I think we're we're, we're kind of anxious to make sure we get it all out after what happened in Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're, you know, we've refined it in our second go, right? Your second time around is always so much better and cleaner. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you challenge conventional ways of working and you implement your military training. So, like, how does this translate into job well done? How do you get it to job well done? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's some basic military and also, you know, business world concepts that I learned at Shell. Um, it, it really is just about making sure that you have a plan of action for every single job, right? So in the in the Marine Corps, we would call it the OODA loop, which is, you know, orientation process where you define the battlefield and then you and then you develop a plan for the battlefield. Same thing kind of goes for a painting job. A lot of times it's a battlefield, right? So um, you know, it's it's about understanding what that looks like. What what does the 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 field of battle look like, and what's our plan, and can we implement the plan cons consistently? Um, you know, and repeat the process over and over again. So much so that we can take another non-painter, military guy, and deliver him a product or a process that he could then implement and learn. You know, to implement. So, um, you know, so really. It's not about the painting. My, the painting is done, you know, by my guys who are professional painters. I mean, they're amazing at what they do, and they're craftsmen, really, is what I call them. Um, for my role, it's really about getting the most out of those craftsmen. It was the same way in the Marine Corps. You have, like, these lance corporals or corporals and sergeants, and they're amazing, right? They have, they're, like, technically proficient, and they can shape their little battlefield the way that they need to do it. Um, but then, you know, like they're knuckleheads sometimes, you know, at the end of the day and they go off and do crazy things that Lance Corporals and Corporals do. They get married and, you know, they <laughs> end up in a Tijuana jail or something. But, you know, so that's part of the whole process. And, uh, you know, the painting world is not unlike the military in that aspect. Uh, but at the end of the day, both of them are trying to produce like something really above and bigger than themselves. And that's what we're trying to do. I love the analogies. Mm -hmm. I, I know you take so much pride in your work and I know you're referencing the battlefield, but I have to say that personally, when I toured the residence in one of our new members also in, in Middletown, um, I was so honored that you took me on a tour behind the scenes and I will never look at another hotel again the same. Um, but I was extremely impressed um, with you and Rachel with the amount of cleanliness, the safety, um, your team was so professional. I never felt like I, I was in a battlefield at all. I wasn't tripping over wires or, you know, people think of a construction zone, they think of, you know, organized chaos. And it just didn't even feel that way. And I feel like this must be kind of like that military responsibility and attention to detail. Is that a part of the model? Yeah, yeah. And that's all part of, you know, shaping the battlefield or the, you know, the job site. It's it's all the same. And, and it's a long row to hoe, really, because um you know for a long time the last people on the job are the painters and they just kind of pick up where everybody else is left off um or if you're hiring a painter to come paint your house or to do something maybe the guy shows up maybe he doesn't show up you know who knows what he's wearing you know and, and what materials he has and so to try to change that whole entire kind of paradigm and to flip it on its head and say, no, I mean, first and foremost, we are a professional company. We bring the right tools, our clothes, our people are dressed appropriately so that you feel comfortable with us in their house. Or if it's a GC for a commercial job, they feel comfortable every time that we show up on site that, you know, that we are going to represent ourselves well. And that all starts with kind of the image that you present. And that image is you know, got to be built up, right? You got to teach the guys, hey, you know, this is how we act. This is how we um, compose our job. These are the ways that I want you to work in the beginning, which is set up your job. And at the end, which is break it down so that it's at least as nice as it was when you got there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and sometimes we lose some, some time or energy because we do that. But I think the product is really what you're most, is most important, right? So quality over quantity. Yeah. Yeah. So you have some exciting news. Did you recently get a certification? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm super excited about it. We um, we finally got our uh, certified minority business owner um, certification for New York City. And then the New York State one is coming 
um, in the next week or so. So it's a long process to get that. I mean, the the hoops that you have to jump through in order to get that are incredible. There's this there's this one little line on the application that says that they reserve the right to come to your house and visit you. And I'm like, come to my house? Like, what? What? Like, do I? Have my poor <laughs> grandmother there? She's like cooking pastela. Someone's gonna like talk to music and like, what are they trying to achieve by that? <laughs> I'm Puerto Rican, you know, my dad, you know, but. Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations. Thanks, thanks. It's awesome. It's a huge, it's a huge uh, benefit, you know, and, um, you know, and a lot of my guys are Hispanic, you know, I mean, a lot of them aren't, we, you know, we try to get the best guys that we can get, but to be able to represent, you know, uh, minorities is a, is a huge honor. So I'm excited about it. That's great. And then so I kind of asked that question because I wanted to go into the who's who in building and construction cover because that was huge. And like yeah. how did you go from painting living rooms to that? That was big. Yeah. So, I mean, that was all that was all part of like a organized plan for the company. Right. So, I mean, when when you're not a painter and you're owning a painting company, you better know what other things that you can bring. Right. Um mm -hmm. And so what I brought was just a plan to get us from where we were, which was at the very beginning, I think our first painting job was a bathroom, you know, and some trim. And so, um, and then two and a half years later, we're painting the residence in and building our reputation, um, you know. And so through that and through some really amazing work with Rachel, who's not here, but she's my business development manager, we were able to, you know, develop some key relationships with people in the industry. And then that led to meeting other people and, you know, and then the opportunity to be on the cover of that magazine came up. And so I didn't really want to do it. Rachel was like, no, we're going to do it. <laughs> I didn't know whether we were ready for it or not. So uh, I think we're actually kind of pushing it. <laughs> So we, we did it and she came out looking great on it. I think she's done it before. I came out looking bloated. I didn't realize um, the camera has like 40 pounds apparently. Yeah, you're cool. You're good. So, you know, was there a significant job that really propelled you into the commercial um, arena? You know, like um, you started in residential, but now you're, you're mostly commercial. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we did a job last year um, for a company called DKI here in, in Orange County, and it was. Uh, yeah, so we are. Uh, they called us out of the blue one day, and we're like, "Hey, listen, we had a huge water leak over at in the dorms at, um, at Mount St. Mary in uh, in Newburgh, and can you guys come over and and do this?" So I went over there and I took a look at it, and it was big. You know, it wasn't just painting. There was a lot of drywall. Um, but, you know, I looked at the numbers, I looked at the job, I looked at the time frame that was necessary, I trusted in my guys, and uh, and we we implemented a plan and we did it. I mean, we, we killed it. it. We, as far as I'm concerned, we, you know, we hit every single mark on time and on schedule. And even though it was truncated and, you know, unfortunate for Mount St. Mary's, it hit right like a couple of weeks before students were about to come back. So they were under a time constraint. Um, but we were able to do it, you know, financially, we were able to do it operationally. We were able to do it. We had the right people in charge. Uh, we had the right, you know, basis of knowledge for the job and we did it. And then, you know, with all commercial jobs, you know, you have to carry the, the investment, you know, until, until payment comes. And so we were able to do it, carry the investment and finally get paid. And, um, all without really having a glitch in the system. And that's when I knew it was time to transition, right? It was always in our business plan to transition out of bedrooms and bathrooms to mm -hmm. commercial jobs, something that you can forecast and you can work with. But um, but the trigger was really doing that job and being a, being fiscally sound enough to get it done. And, uh, and, and the other thing that you said that's very important is you had the trust in your team. Yeah. You know, you knew that your team could deliver this job, deliver it in a quality manner and deliver it in, in the time frame that was needed. So that's that's so important for a leader, you know, to to understand that they can trust in their team when they're moving forward, especially when it's it's your name on the business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the only way, really. I mean, unless you want to do every single thing yourself. Yep. You got to train your guys and you got to trust that they're going to do it. And then you got to 
you know, one of my old managers at Shell used to always say, trust but verify. And I kind of agree with that. But, you know, it's it's true. You got to let your guys go out there and do what they're going to do. And then if they make mistakes, we all do. I make a ton of mistakes almost every day. Um, mm-hmm. And then you just got to make up for it, right? You just got to go back and either do it right or you catch it in the middle of the mistake and you rectify it. But that's life, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's let's go into that then. You know, there's there, there's so much success that your business has, has enjoyed, but there's got to be learning opportunities. And you know that there's learning opportunities every day, as you said. But would you say that what was like the biggest challenge as you're facing starting your own business? You know, maybe for somebody that's just starting out. Um, well, I think that it always the hardest part of any business, unless, like I said, it's a sole proprietor is the people, right? So you're constantly having, um, to try to make sure that you motivate your people in a way that they want to be motivated. And, and every single person has a different way. You know, some guys, they just like to have work every single day. And so you need to make sure that they have work every other day. Some guys like to be told that they do a good job every single day. And so then you have to find a way to make sure that that happens. Um, and, and the oil industry is, or, or oil, sorry, the painting industry is, it is nomadic, right? My, I mean, I have one guy, two guys that have been with me for over a year, but we've been in business three years and I don't have a single guy who's been with me for all three years. Um, you know, it ebbs and flows because there's a lot of work in the summer and not so much work in the winter. We have work all year long. Um, but I think that some painters get in the habit of not working in the winter. And so then when you're working all through the winter, they don't necessarily like it. So they right. do their own thing. Um, so, you know, it's always the people, right? That's always the hardest part. I mean, I learn new things. About human resources. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I learn new things about painting every day because I'm not historically a painter, right? I learn about technical stuff. But that's stuff that once you learn it, it's there up in your head, right? But dealing with people that's um, the craftsman that's the trade yeah and um you know but that's why you get paid the no bucks <laughs> so our, with orange county being you know the crossroads to the northeast i'm sure your business is about either has or is going to expand out of orange county has you, have you seen that kind of growth yet yeah i mean we have a job up in albany at the end of the year another hotel we have a big apartment complex in massachusetts towards the end of the year as well we're talking about apartment complexes in rockland um you know we're partnering right now on a major warehouse job in montgomery and the company that's building that warehouse is a construction company out of new york city so you know my we're always looking to expand and, and and grow our partnerships. And so every time I work with a new GC, I try to leave that experience with them feeling good about working with Matt and Lacker. And so then if they do, then maybe we get, you know, another job or another opportunity to work. And so, you know, if we could be in New York City or in Westchester by the beginning of next year, we'll be on target for where I want the company to go. Great. So you kind of, touched in the beginning about you know your successful model that you built and how it can be implemented specifically by other uh people leaving the military but by anybody um tell us about that and tell us you know you're an entrepreneur and your wheels are always turning so you know what else is next what's next for for dan feliciano yeah i mean so i mean my heart and my time is all spent on matt and lacquer but my the time that I don't spend on it is constantly moving in another direction. So um, I own another company and that company produces um, mobile device applications, right? So we released our first mobile device application um, about three months ago. It's a parental control app called Saturday Morning. And it's a lot of fun, really. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be the next Steve Jobs or anything, but you know, my daughter has a has a mobile device. She's six years old and she's constant staring at it. And so I built this app that allows me to lock up her mobile device until she does like some chores, right? So like she'll be on the device and a screen will pop up and I'll say, you know, take out the garbage. And then once she takes out the garbage, she takes a picture of the garbage out, it gets sent back to my phone, and then I can release her iPad back to her and she can use it because you know, the days of just taking the iPad away is ridiculous. Now I get nothing out of it. So with my app, I get everything I want, right? Or bed is the laundry is put away. Everything's done. It's all done halfway because she's only six years old. But at least, 
I wish I had that with my kids for a little because Saturday morning mobile app was me going over and unplugging it from the wall. Yeah, exactly. And then nobody gets anything, right? They just get mad because you unplugged in. There's still nothing to do with dishes. At least this way. I, I, I got really good at, at taking the hard drive out and yeah. yeah. <laughs> or hiding yeah. the HDMI cable as they got older. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, that was the way we were raised, too. I mean, my parents, when I was, it's called Saturday morning, because in my house, you know, you get to go downstairs on Saturday morning. And as long as my parents were asleep, you could watch cartoons. But as soon as they woke up, it was clean the house time. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then you clean the house. And as soon as you're finished cleaning the house, you can go back to watching Saturday morning cartoons. So, you know, it was brilliant. They got the house clean. We got to watch cartoons if we did our job well enough. And you know, and then everybody was somewhat happy, you know, and, uh, the, you know, the, the mobile devices are here to stay. There's not much we can do about them anymore. So we might as well get our money's worth out of them, at least out of our kids. Well, thank you, Dan. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, no, I mean, I'm really happy to be a part of the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, um, it's been awesome. You, you being a part of it in particular was the, one of the reasons why we finally pulled the trigger. Because uh, now I feel like we have, you know, a connection with the chamber and and then we'll start growing, hopefully, at some point when we can all come together again and meet some other people and, you know. Yeah, well, join the virtual networking. So I'll put the plug in now for our next speed virtual networking. Um, we had one a couple weeks ago and it was very successful. So we're going to do it again on August 20th at four o'clock. And uh, you or Rachel can join, or both of you. Um, we had a good turnout the last time. It's sponsored by our corporate partner, Woodbury Com Premium Outlets. So go ahead and sign up and join us. Invite your friends. It's ten dollars for non-members. All right, sounds great. Thanks for joining us, Dan. I look forward to seeing you soon. See you later. Best to your family. Bye bye. Bye bye. And thank you all for joining us. And thank you to our members for allowing us to continue to support and grow their businesses and to our corporate partners for their dedication and their commitment to the mission of the chamber. We do have a lot going on this week. As I shared, our speed networking is coming up in two weeks. Uh, but this week we have a ribbon cutting at Fusion CBD's market on Wednesday. You'll need to register for that no later than tomorrow because we do have a 50 person capacity that we have to follow and mass and social distancing will be enforced. Um, also on Wednesday at two o'clock, we have Meet the Member with Central Hudson. Thursday at 10 a.m., you can join us on Facebook Live for our monthly breakfast. This month, our guest speaker is going to be our member, John Lentini of Crescom. He's going to discuss strengthening resilience through leadership. And on Friday at two o'clock, we have our rescheduled YMCA of Middletown Meet the member. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay cool out there and have a great day.